Obviously, we don't want this arms dealer out and about. We'd prefer that he was behind bars, right? So I agree with that sentiment. What would you say, though, the so there are people on the far right, as you know, Joe, uh, that are going after Brittany Griner, saying she hates the country. I, I don't think because she took a knee or refused to leave the locker room for the national anthem, she hates the country. I don't like it when people say that. I don't think you've ever said that. But what do you make of so many people on the far right that are making claims like that? <laughs> Brian, you're too nice nice to me. me. Uh, There might have been a time or two to me when I I said said crap crap like that. that. But no, no, that's that's every every bit as American American as waving waving the flag, flag, right? right? Burning Burning the flag flag is every bit as American as meeting during the anthem. That's that's what we honor and celebrate is individual freedom. But this way in right-wing media, coming from right-wing media, I know that well. Yeah. And to me, I guess it's not a shocker. What do you make of this guy, Whalen? Obviously, he served this country, and this is a, a difficult circumstance for him and his family. Like, well, wait a second. Brittany Griner has been released. What about what about our guy, you know, who served this country honorably? What do you make of that situation? Well, first off, uh, yeah, he is our guy. He's an American. But Brittany's our gal, too. Uh, she's an American. It's like, Brian, it's like I, I, I think I tweeted this and I said this on a TV show yesterday. I felt all day yesterday that I had to remind all of us that Brittany Griner is an American. She's an American, just like you and me. So is Paul Whelan. Uh, my, my God, are we so divided as a nation that we can't celebrate the return of an American? Um, look, I take Biden at his word that the Whelan situation is a hell of a lot, lot more complicated. Uh, and I take Biden at his word that he's working on it. Why is it that there are so many Republicans out there that they hate Joe Biden so much that they think that it was a choice, that it was, you know, it's eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And oh, I'm going to take Brittany Griner over Whalen because, some, you know, she's a minority and she's gay. There are actually a lot of Republicans that believe that. I, I, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, but I don't believe that. I, I believe Joe Biden when he says this was the offer put on the table and Putin uh, and, and the Russians are dealing with Whalen and, and this case much differently than Brittany Griner's. The base of my former party, as you and I have said, is radicalized. Look, there's hate and division on both sides. Uh, man, it's, it's off the charts on the right right now. It's not that you're my political opponent. It's not that I disagree with you. It's that now you're my enemy. I want to bury you. I want to destroy you. That is a really prevalent attitude now uh, among the Republican Party base, and it's dangerous. So, Joe, I agree with you what you said earlier. You know, I'm not happy with this arms dealer uh, being out. Uh, I don't think anybody should be happy about that. But here's what I say, and you can tell me whether you disagree or not. The term is hypocrisy, right? Donald Trump, as you know, Joe, released 5,000 Taliban terrorists. Now, I'm sure he didn't want to do that, but I'm sure he had reasons for doing that. But many of these Republicans out there that have a problem with this arms dealer being uh, freed, and that's fine. They kept quiet when Donald Trump released 5,000 terrorists. How could they have any credibility? Uh, They don't. (laughs) They don't. Uh, Look, and I'm not the only one who has said this, but because I come from Trump world and I voted for him in 16 and his people were my people, it, it is a cult. It really, really is for a large segment of the party base and and a big rule in a cult is the cult leader can never do wrong, ever do wrong. And so they can't admit that. I mean, I actually yesterday had a bunch of Trump supporters firing at me all day, trying to excuse Trump for not bringing Waylon home. I mean, remember Waylon was arrested and jailed in Russia in 2018. Right. I literally had a Trump supporter tell me, quote, Trump wasn't president in 2018. You're kidding. Trump wasn't president in 2018, he said with a straight face. Well, that's that's pretty stupid. But anyway, isn't that Trump's base, right? I mean, that's Trump's base today. I'm sorry I say it, Joe. Uh, Uneducated people. At this point, if you're still a Trump supporter, I don't think you're very intelligent. If you're just joining us, he is intelligent. Former presidential candidate Joe Walsh joining us right now on the line. So I know you spoke about this with Abrams, I believe, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, about this Ocasio-Cortez investigation. Can you share with us what this investigation is all about? Because to me, anyway, it sounds a bit petty. What, what, what is your take on this? 
Uh, it does sound petty. Um, it, it's it's about when when AOC last year went to the Met Gala, uh, and she was given a ticket, uh, and she she borrowed a really fancy dress. So two conservative groups filed a complaint. It it seems pretty straightforward to me, right? That that um, members of Congress can go can receive tickets to charitable events as long as the charity directly invites them. That's clear. The Met directly invited her. She borrowed the dress. She didn't keep it. New York City officials typically go to this event, right? Because this is a major New York City cultural institution. But again, part of the tribal nature we're in here, you're always trying to go gotcha on high profile members of the other party. Yeah. I wanted to uh, ask you uh, again another Donald Trump question, but you know what he said about you know our Constitution. He wants to abolish parts of it. What what was your take on that? Is this guy even taking it farther than he usually does now? Because it seems like he's unraveling by the day. No, no, I disagree with you. No, this isn't. This is this is him from day one. So, and and I know you're not, but no one should be shocked, dismayed, or surprised by anything he says. But I will remind everybody listening to us right now, uh, give me another name. Come on, tough guy, give me another name. Right now, Trump's the odds on favor to be the Republican Party nominee in 24. I don't see that changing. So Joe, let's go there. Uh, Six months ago, I would have told you if Trump ran against uh, Biden, I think Trump would have a decent chance. I actually think Biden is in a better situation now than he was in 2020. I know there's a lot of Republicans out there dislike Biden. He's gotten a lot done in the last six months, and I know that's hard for some Republicans to uh, equate and admit. I think if if the election was tomorrow, Biden wins in a landslide. That's just my personal opinion. Do you disagree? I don't. Uh, but if the election were held five or six months ago, Trump might have won. So I don't right. know what it's going to look like in five or six months. Um, I, I do know that Trump. Um, is very strong still in the Republican Party. And I do know, and I want to remind every Democrat listening to us, Biden didn't win in a landslide. Um, I, I, look, I'm a rare conservative who'd like to get rid of the Electoral College. It ain't happening by 24. Yeah. Joe Biden won by about 70,000 votes in three states. Everybody listening to us needs to understand uh, that that the Democrats, this is not automatic that they would beat Trump or any other Republican in 24. Agree. I don't think it's automatic. I just think Joe Biden, I think we agree, is in a better position now yes. than maybe he was six months ago. But no, I agree with you 100%. I don't think it's automatic. I, I don't trust people that vote. I'm sorry. I just don't. I'm not saying I don't trust. I don't want to sound like Kerry Lake. I, I trust the Democratic process. I guess I just don't trust a lot of Republicans doing the right thing. Uh, but I want to ask you a little bit about uh, the respect for a marriage act. Uh, we might disagree on this, but fundamentally, I think we'll agree that, you know, let people do what they want, right? I don't want the government involved in marriage. What do you make of all the Republicans out there that voted against this bill? And if you were still in Congress, how would you have voted? Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes. I, obviously, uh, my friend, I would have voted for it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm struck by my former political party. Uh, I kept saying to myself the other day, it's 2022. It's the year 2022, and the House of Representatives still feels like they have to pass legislation to protect same-sex and interracial marriage in the year 2022. So, so how out of touch, right, is my former party on a basic issue of freedom like this? It's no surprise that young people don't vote Republican. Yeah. And let's dig deeper into this for a moment, because as I said in the first segment, listen, I would imagine maybe you're one of those people, which I respect. If you don't believe in that lifestyle or your religion, you know, you don't believe in, in, in two men or two women getting married, that you're entitled to your belief, but just don't infringe on other people. That's all I ask. Do you, right? Uh, are you one of those people where you're, you're not necessarily, you don't agree with the lifestyle, but you don't no, want to tell no. other people what to do? No, no, and I, I know I'm a I'm a crazy Tea Party conservative, my friend. But on a, on most of this social stuff, I'm very libertarian, live and let live. Right. I, I'm I'm like Barack Obama. Who I've never said that. I'm like Hillary Clinton. Let's remember this whole same sex marriage thing. 
it's come like this. The world has changed like this. I said Obama and Hillary because 15, 20 years ago, Obama and Hillary opposed same-sex marriage. Um, when I was in Congress 10 years ago, I opposed same-sex marriage. I've never opposed a lifestyle. But like, like many Democrats, I've gotten with it enough. Move on. It's the law of the land. Happy for them. This is a fight. But, but, but there's a, there is a sizable contingent of Republicans that hasn't moved on from this. And they're still fighting it. Amen. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, so, Joe, there, I, I had a controversial filmmaker on the show a few days ago. Uh, he did a documentary about Michelle Obama. He seems to think, as do many others that I've talked to, that eventually Michelle Obama is going to announce that she's running for president. Now, I think that's Republicans' worst nightmare because I think she would defeat just about anybody on the right. So that's my first question. Do you do you believe that Michelle Obama will run for president in 2024? And if she does, can you name me one Republican that can beat her? No and no. Hmm. No, I don't think she'll ever run for president, but I agree with you. If she did ever run for president, I can't think of one Republican that could beat her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm with you on that one. Um, last question, going back to Brittany Griner. I've said and By that the way, by the way, yep. to, to your question, my friend, sure. yep. we still live in a culture where I like the idea of people from outside of politics running for office. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know post Herschel Walker, there are some celebrities <laughs> that have no business running for office, but I got no problem with actors and actresses, businessmen and women, celebrities throwing their hat in the ring. I think generally that's a good thing. And I think a lot of Americans want that because you and I've never talked about this because the Republican party is so messed up. Right. Look, I'm sick of politicians in both parties. And I think I, I think I think most Americans who identify as independent now are tired of both parties. I'm with you. A hundred percent. You just opened up a can of worms. I didn't even ask you about Herschel Walker, but uh, I'll ask you this. Is it daunting to you that you had even if you don't like Raphael Warnock, you don't like his policies? I get that. Look at all the people that voted for Herschel Walker. I mean, to me, that's just astounding. What, what do you make of that? It was pretty close. What do you make of all the people that wanted Herschel Walker representing them? Well, it's Georgia. Let's remember it's Georgia. Georgia is not a blue state yet. Every one of these states is different. And it's, and it's, look, it's, it's the Republican party. Now it's my team. I don't give a damn who the candidate is. It's my team. Damn it. Yeah. Will you, uh, if Donald Trump obviously is is running for office again, and he probably will be the front runner, a lot can happen between now and 2024. But I would assume that if it is against Joe Biden or any Democrat, for the most part, you will vote for the Democrat over Donald Trump. Is that, is that a fair assumption to make? Yeah, I said I said somewhere else earlier this week, my friend, that I'm I'm a proud Tea Party libertarian conservative. Uh, and I think for the rest of my life, I will be in this position where I am working my ass off to help get Democrats elected because those guys over there, my former party, are a real direct threat to our democracy. So this is going to continue to be me for some time. Last question, Joe. Last time you were on our show, you had made the statement that if uh, Donald Trump is elected president in 2024, you will consider leaving the country. I posted that on social media and it got a lot of reaction. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Because I would imagine you're being very genuine as you always are and you're being honest. Uh, and you still believe that if, if Donald Trump is our president in 2024 and he wins, you might not be living in this country anymore. Um, I, I believe I'd have to leave. Uh, I wouldn't feel safe. Um, I know that uh, he has a list of people uh, who he would exact revenge on. Um, and suffice to say, I, I wouldn't feel safe living in this country because of that. Absolutely. I understand why you would make that statement, my, my friend. Joe Walsh, you are always one of my I'm going to move to Portugal and run to be the president of Portugal. Damn it. Can I be your vice president? 
Oh, yes. God, yeah. Let's do it. I, I would absolutely fun. get on the ticket with Joe Walsh. Are you kidding me? I'd jump on that opportunity. Maybe the communications director. I don't know if I'm fit for being a politician. But, Joe, uh, I always appreciate it. As you know, when you come on this show, you're, you're one of my favorites. Uh, and uh, I hope you have a great weekend, my friend. I appreciate your honesty, as always. And we'll talk to you soon, okay? If I don't talk to you before the holidays, have a great uh, New Year's and a uh, great Christmas, okay, my friend? You as well. Great radio. Thank you, brother. Hey. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate you. Uh, it's always great radio because I have Joe Walsh on. Let me be very clear on that. Joe Walsh is the best. Um, God, I love that guy. I really do. And uh, if he ran for office ever again, I would be the first one in line to vote for him. Uh, I, I love him to death. I really do. I love his honesty. How about that? There's a man who in, in 2016 was uh, a staunch Republican, a staunch Donald Trump supporter. And boy, has he switched. In a big way. I'll open up the phone lines if anybody wants to uh, join the conversation and, and talk about uh, the interview I just did with Joe Walsh. Uh, of course, uh, Brittany Griner is in the news. Number to call 702-221-7283. And again, that number, if you want to be a part.